Yeah, I'd like to welcome you to our talk, Multi-Sensor Feeder Automated and Easy to Use Bird Monitoring Tool for Citizens. We conducted uh, this work together with the two colleagues who are already named before and a further colleague who could not be present today, which is called Thomas Bartoczek, and we come from the Institute for Geoinformatics in Münster in Germany. Right, here I can present you our content, but I will mainly talk about our so-called multi-sensor feeder, which I will present you in a few minutes. But let's start first with the topic of the biodiversity loss. So at this point in time, more species are threatened than with extinction than ever before. This is a statistic on the left-hand side by the IUCN, the International Union for Conservation of Nature. And they found out that the number of endangered species doubled from 2007 to 2019 to over 14,000. And this is especially true also for birds. Yeah, this is also evident by the graphic on the right-hand side, which was created by the Nature and Biodiversity Conservation Union in Germany. And they found out that the total number of breeding pairs falls by 14% between 1998 and 2009. So for example, for the starling, there's a decrease of 42%, so numbers about 2.6 million. Yeah, the reason for this are oftentimes anthropogenic impacts, so excessive land use and destruction of nature. And there is a, really a need to change something, but to change something, we need to know what can we change or where can we do something, and that's what we work on. So we have three areas which help us in our research subject. First, citizen science. So there are already several projects which are working in this field. For example, there's a project where citizens can count birds in their backyards or there's an application where you can track a citizen's invasive alien species. And other Possibility is, for example, iNaturalist, where you can validate recorded data by other citizens, and there are also some quite interesting open source tools like the Sensebox and open source weather station, which you can also use and operate as citizen. Right, however, a continuous data gathering is also time consuming and for citizens, and therefore it's quite useful to use in automatization. This can be done by several sensors, for example, by an RFID ship, a camera, or even a microphone to record sound. And it's also possible to combine different sensors and to use further information. Yeah, artificial intelligence can be a game changer in this subject. So artificial intelligence can be used to identify an animal, but not only to identify an animal, to also identify the species of the identified animal. Then you can use already existing models, you can train your own model, and you can combine different parameters. So for example, you can use the appearance of the animal or the motion and environment where the animal is living to raise your probability of the prediction which you do with, with AI. Right, and this brings me to our uh, yeah, research projects. We want to develop or are developing an automated and easy to use birds monitoring tool for citizens, which we called a multi-sensor feeder. So the overall, overall goal of this work is to contribute to the evaluation of bi the biodiversity in be people's gardens or balconies by monitoring birds and, and environmental factors. What's important in this? context, so we want all the data which is collected by the stations in the gardens to be available as open access. Second, we want to identify the species of the birds, of the visiting birds automatically, and we not only want to collect data about the birds visiting the stations, but we want also to collect data about the environment around the station. And the station should be reproducible, affordable, and easy to use for anyone. Yeah, so that every citizen can build up the station on their own, which leads to a high distribution of stations and thus to a high amount of data. Now I come to our approach. So the approach is to test different configurations in terms of the hardware, so different RAM of the microcomputer, different cameras, different kinds of detection, how we detect the movement. Also in terms of the software, we, changed, uh, we tried out different options, so for example in terms of the data storage or the processing location, and for the casing of the station we also tried different 
yeah, variants, for example, we changed the kind of timber, but I will talk about it in a minute. Yeah, we had certain criteria during uh, testing these different configurations. What was important for us is a high usability, functionality, and a reasonable price. Right, and with this I come to our main results, the multi-sensor feeder. So on the left-hand side you can see all components needed to build up the station. And I explain them in a minute in a bit more detailed. On the right-hand side you can see the build-up station in a garden mounted to a wooden stake. Right, and first I will introduce you the technical components. So on, you, on the left-hand side you see the different components, and on the right-hand side you see the name and the corresponding costs for it. So first of all, we have a microcomputer, a Raspberry Pi Model 4B with 2 gigabit of RAM. We have a camera, which is the version 2 Raspberry Pi camera with, with 8 megapixels, and we use for the more a microphone and a balance, which includes a load cell and a weight sensor, right, and furthermore, an environmental sensor which measures temperature and humidity. Yeah, the price for all these uh, technical components is shortly below 100 euro, and the prices were taken from the online seller Berry Base, because we so we choose this as a vendor as it offered most hardware needed to a reasonable price and with good service. Now we come to the casing components. So we use mainly a beech wood multiplex plate with a width of nine millimeters, out of which we yeah, created the individual parts or cut them out. We furthermore need a plastic lip for the station, a wooden titled perch where the bird can lens on, a case for the camera, a roofing felt for weather resistance, and some further stuff like screws to attach the station and to assemble it. Yeah, and at least the casing co components cost about 40 euros, so that we come to a final price of about 140 euros as production price for the whole station. Yeah, now I come to the recognition process, but firstly you can see the station from a side view. The interior is divided into two different parts. First, a space for the footer in the front, so the footer can go here through so that it is reachable by the uh, bird who's landing on the perch in front of the station. And in the background you can see some space for the technical compu uh, components like the Raspberry Pi. And of course the roof is uh, removable, so if you want to reach it with, uh, to, to make some adaptions at the Technic or to refill the uh, footer. Right, so the balance in the front is measuring the weight in a short term interval. And the environment sensor at the bottom, so there's a hole, so that they are connected to the microcomputer, measures temperature and humidity every x minutes, so the user can influence or set a settings how often the temperature or the environmental sensor should measure something. Right, and now if a bird lands on the perch, then a movement is starting, what we call movement and the balance detects changes in the weight. So this is the way how we recognize a the movement. Then the camera starts recording and films the bird, and a microphone starts recording the environment, so the sound in the environment. And if a bird is leaving, then the movement is over because the balance detects that there's again a change because no weight is measured by the balance, so the uh, movement is over. And with this, the camera stops recording and the microphone stops also re recording and with this the movement is over and the microcomputer starts to send the data as movement package to our server and then the server is able to detect the bird speed size by the usage of artificial intelligence and stores all the data on our server and with it the data can be shared and therefore we use a platform where researchers as well as citizens can yeah, reach all the data collected by the stations. Right, the collected data is available in real time via our API. So some usual data, of course, like a time print, but especially what is in the red, yeah, in the red field is the environmental data, so the temperature and humidity measured by the station. And if we look, have a look at the movement data, the weight of the visiting bird is stored and the surrounding sound is available, as well as an AI-based speed size recognition. So in this case, it is a great tit with a prediction score of 96%. 
Yeah, but our data or the data collected by the stations is not only available via API in real time, but also via our website. Here you can see on the left hand side the stations which are currently visited by birds. And on the right side, you can see really one station on our platform where you can find the recordings of the last three birds who visited our stations as video, as audio, also the weight is shown and also the detected species size by our server. Furthermore, you can see some temporal series about the environment data in terms of the temperature and humidity. And furthermore, at the bottom, you can see the birds who visit, so a total number of birds who visited our sta the, the corresponding station yesterday or today. Yeah, with this, I want to come to one important point that all of our stuff we are doing is open data. So the research code is available on GitHub and Zenodo, and we provide an open documentation for our API. We use open source tools, for example, for the server, we use Docker, Flash, or Nginx. Yeah, concerning the model who's recognizing the, um, the birds, we use iNaturalist data together with a mobile NetV2 model made by Google. And for our website, for the map, we use Leaflet as well as React. Right, and uh, if you want to build up the station yourself, we have a do-it-yourself manual online available on GitHub. And furthermore, you can of course visit our platform to have a look at the different stations and to get some more information about our project. Right, now I come to our discussion. So we decided to use as microcomputer the Raspberry Pi Model 4B with two gigabits of RAM. This is a relatively common tool with a lot of documentation and easy adaptable to our needs. So we, there were many uh, compatible sensors available with enough documentation and also the RAM of two gigabits is quite enough for our purpose. Concerning the camera, we use the Raspberry Pi camera model 2 with eight megapixels. This is uh, due to usability reasons as it is easily attachable and the price is quite reasonable for such and sufficient quality. For example, if we would use the high quality cam, it's much more expensive and not very usable due to the size. Now I come to the detection of the birds. There are quite some different options. First, the motion sensor could be used and attached near to the camera, but therefore manual settings are required, like to set a time delay or the sensitivity. And this is only manually changeable and not by software. And of course, it's an additional sensor. But there's also a positive argument. So you can detect movement also in the background. So not only movement directly in front of the station, but also in the background. This is also true for the pixel change detection. This, the good thing here is that it is also already installed because we do not need an additional sensor. You can simply do it with the camera but uh, it's challenging to define a threshold um, at which pixel change counts at, as, as motion. And this takes, uh, there's a need for a permanent uh, analysis and this requires a lot of processing power. Nevertheless, interesting like the motion sensor if you also want to cover uh, motion in the background. But we finally decided to use the balance. So a certain change in weight detection counts as movement so that there is a low number of false recordings because the camera only starts recording if there's really a weight measured by the balance, and thus there's a lower processing requirement which enables us to use a low-cost microcontroller. In terms of the choice of the wood, we first used a dark-colored multiplex plate including a film layer as weather protection, but time by time we recognized that the station with this black material is really heating up and we decided to use a beach plate instead, which we nevertheless recommend to use a glaze to make it even more weather protected. In terms of the general size, it's important that there's enough space for technical components and foot and that it is not too big and still attachable by everyone. For the roof, the angle and length is important, so if you look at, uh, you take a detailed look, uh, at the front there's a small overhang, so I mean this here, so it's important that there is some space for foot, that the, the, um, the bird can really reach it. 
In terms of the footer silo, it's similar. You need enough space for footer and a sufficient angel that the footer can really roll out. And in terms of the balance position, it needs to be far enough away from the camera so that the bird can record, can be recorded. We also thought about using a perch or a plate instead of a perch, but if you use a plate, there's a lot of place for unwanted stuff like dirt or fecal, and this influences then the whole recognition process and distorts the measured weights. Yeah, then another thing we thought about was recording videos or images. So if you record video, videos, there's more space for information and more. it is probably more interesting for the citizens because they can really watch the videos. Images instead need less disk space and are easier to send via network. Finally, we decided to record videos because if we only got one single image of the bird, probably only parts of the bird are depicted. Yeah, we now use a 30 frames per second video, whereby we use every 10th frame, which is then finally analyzed by our image recognition model. Concerning the processing, you could do the image recognition on the microcontroller or on the server. If you do it on the microcontroller, more processing power for the microcomputer is needed, so probably then two gigabits of RAM are not enough. But then if you do it there, you only need to send, for example, a short text information like the speed size predicted by the model, and then you, it's not required to use really Wi-Fi. You could also use a low-power network like LoRaWAN instead of Wi-Fi. Right, and in terms of sending the data, I already explained that we uh, send movement package, but in addition, we also send environment packages where we send only the environmental information like temperature and humidity. We do this that there, this is also possible to uh, answer research question in depending on the environment. Yeah, but it's a bit more processing power needed. Right, concerning the privacy, Stations are built up in garden of private person and the recordings and position of stations are available on our homepage. So it's really a need to ensure the data privacy. Currently, the camera focuses on the perch. The background is blurred quite a bit and recordings are only stored when a white is recognized. And the citizens, of course, need to agree that the data is stored. But there are some steps we want to do in the future. For example, the location could be blurred via hexagons, sensor.community, is doing this so you then not have the, yeah, the corresponding locations but they are kind of blurred in a large-scale hexagon. Another idea is a light-weighted image recognition to detect unwanted content so that you already got an image recognition on the Raspberry Pi which is identifying unwanted content and if there is a person for example on it then the data is not sent to our server. Right, there are also some limitations. You need certain do-it-yourself tools, for example, a 3D printer or further tools like a drill or a saw, but this should be available normally in a well-equipped home workshop. You need to think about the station proportions, so a big bird probably is not able to land on the small perch, and a small bird probably is too far away from the footer to reach it if he, if he stands on the perch. Furthermore, of course, the footer is kind of limiting. Different footer affects the station differently as the visiting birds change with the chosen footer. You need to think about weather protection. So there's a need to ensure that all the different sensors are weather protected. We started to put our stations in nature in May. So until today, they are running. Let's see how long they will do it. And of course, there is a validation need because we are sitting in science pro projects. So this is a only due to the citizen science approach, our project is running because this way we can really collect a lot of data. But yeah, as every citizen is a bit different, the stations are a bit different and also the collected data is different and therefore it need to be um, yeah, validated. Yeah, now I come to future work. Our idea is to use some further sensors, for example, particulate matter loudness sensor or an infrared camera to make also recordings during the night. We thought about using an alternative microcontroller, which could lower the production costs. We also thought about in standalone modes, so that we, for example, change the network connection to LoRaWAN or cellular, or that we use not a stable power cable, but instead a battery or a solar power. We also thought about detection of individual birds so that you do not say there were 100 birds today but 50 times the same bird. We thought about the validation. This could be also done a bit more optimized. 
and we thought about training our own model because we now really collect a lot of image data and thus we can train our own model or combine it with a pre-trained model at sea. And of course, it's also interesting to make the station available for further organisms. So already now there were some squirrels and it would be, of course, also interesting to track them. Yeah, and with this, I come to the end. So our presentation is also available via this link. The paper is already published. It's a website. You can see some more information about our project in general. But of course, you can see there the stations. And yeah, while you think about some great questions, you can see a video about the birds who already visited our stations. Thank you.